Today I'm looking at an ECU. This isn't the faulty one. This is one that I've got from eBay. Uh, it didn't cost a lot of money and I was going to practice taking chips and stuff like that on and off. But one thing I wanted to show you was this is of a Peugeot um, 206. Looks very similar to one that came off another car that I wanted to look at, but they're not exactly the same, but inside they look close enough. And what I wanted to show you was, this is the coil problem on this one. It's got a wasted spark. So we've got two cylinders fired at the same time. One of them, the piston's coming up, compression, and it fires just near the top of the compression. And then it comes down on the power. Um, so at the same time, we've got the exhaust. Just as it's coming up near the top of the exhaust, it'll fire and then it starts coming down for the inlet. So that's what these things here are. These are coil drivers. That one and that one. There's two of them. It's a four-cylinder, but because it's got the wasted spark, we've only got two coil drivers. And we see one of the wires here, the white wire, goes into a test light. That's going to be a coil. The other white wire goes into another test light. These have two different colored bulbs, but that doesn't matter. It's just because that's what I'm using. And what, what I wanted to do is, just in case anyone's curious like I was, the wire basically comes into here onto that. This base. You see it here and here. And there and there, it's the same thing. So it comes in through that, and it'll come out through here. This is where it gets the ground. When this gets switched on, that gets a ground. And we've got, um, it's got to be controlled. So what I've got is these two go to the battery positive, along with some other stuff, and then we've got the battery negative. And I've gone into here. So what I'm going to do is basically go through here. I drew a picture of it, but I'll just tell you. I've got 5 volts. Supply is this second one here. And a ground. The next one along, we're going to ignore that, but this one right here. That one, if I give it power, we'll switch this on. Which switches on a test light. And if I do the same over here, I've got the ground. 5 volt supply, and the next one, we get the the uh, other test light coming on, so they both work in a similar way, so this is going from battery positive, I would think a 5 volt might be enough to do this, so that's on, and that's on, so those transistors are working, because what how I know they're working is, well they're not transistors, they're coil drivers they were labeled as and what I did I looked on eBay I looked at the part number went on to eBay somebody was selling one and it said what each of these little legs do the pins on the side so that's when I knew that was a ground that was the next one's the 5 volt supply the next one was a base Darlington which I'm not going to be concerned about at the moment. I think that's feedback, so it knows that it's switched on. The next one along is the one that I was just tapping tapping on with this. This is connected to battery power, but I didn't want to put it in without going through an LED test light. I wanted to just keep the, the flow of current down. So that's the next one along, and that's what switches them on. And same on that, that one right there. And then the last one said it was a, what was that called, a flag. Now they did change the voltage. The voltage changed on them when it was switched on. I could ch uh, show you that in a second. And I think that's feedback. But then I had to find the wire, see where it goes. And it goes all the way onto this one here, pin 14 and 16. And I'll show you how I figured that out. Because what I wanted to do was follow it and... Some of these tracks are on the other side of the board, and you don't see where they go. So, I was trying to find it on here. Find the track. So we know we've got this one. 
there, that, that lights that one. And the one next to it lights the other one. Now what we've got there is the little resistor. I go to the other side of the resistor. It doesn't light that. It's only if it's on this side. So from this resistor back it doesn't doesn't do it. There's maybe just not quite enough current through this LED to make it work. But I don't want to short it out and go direct onto there. But at least I know which pins are which here. Is that one? The other side of that. Just doesn't light the test. It's not enough to switch that on. But this side is. This voltmeter is just going to show us, we've got a ground here, then we've got 5 volts there, on the next one, 4.97, and that's the same on this side, we've got the ground and then 4.97 volts there, but one thing I was going to, wanted to show you as well, was if we lose one of the 12 volt powers, like that one, 12 volt power, I, I don't have any volts on that now. I don't have a supply, you see. And the same on the next one along that had 5 volts. We don't have the 5 volts down there. What The main thing I wanted to show you was using this thing again, same as before, if it's getting triggered on the same one, we don't get these switching on. So it's important that we've got all our powers. That's just to show one 12 volt supply out of, if there's more than this, there's, I think there's like maybe another one. But if there's one missing, and it's in this case, it goes to a five volt um, regulator. But inside here, now these don't work. So if there's no spark, it could be that this processor is the bit that sends the signal out. I'll show you how I figured out the wires we're going to that in a second. Um, but with one power missing, you could have a fuse that's gone, just one fuse, and we're getting power to this, but we're not going to get these to work. So that's important before we go too far into the ECU. Check all the powers in the grounds going to the ECU. This is how I figured out how where the track went, using kitchen foil, wrapping a, a strip around my finger, using an alligator clip, or a crocodile clip, just some of this stuff. So I've got a multimeter that I'm going to set for, um, so we can hear that, like that. We know which pin I was triggering it from here. Now, if you had time, you could go through, through every single pin and everything and see where it goes. It could take a while, or you could kind of move this about over parts. It's not plugged in, there's no power to this. And um, see when we get into this area here. See that? It makes a noise. Same as if I go to the other side this other one, the coil driver next to it, that also makes a noise. You could move your finger side on and then what you could do when you start getting close to it is change the end out and take, take one of these. So we've already narrowed it down, right? And it was this area, so this is where we just that's it. So we've got a few pins here. We just go to different places, see which one it was. In this case, it's that one. And for the one next to it, this is the trigger that sort of switches it on and off um, when it gets to there. And again, it's the other one there, the one next to the resistor. The other two are empty spaces, like these two are empty spaces. So. That's kind of a bit of a clue that it's to do with something that's only got two, but potentially could have more. So that's another thing there. But it's quicker to narrow it down with that. And the same thing you could do 
again, let's say we don't know where it goes to, but we now know it goes to this resistor. So we'll go to the other side of the resistor and we'll carry it on. We'll just carry on from there. So where was it? Right about there. That one. So I'm into that other side of the resistor. You can see it bends round and we just do the same thing again. When I touch it, it should make a noise. I've not got the wire in here. One second. Got to connect that up, otherwise it won't. So when I touch it, I'll get this set up again. There's those two resistors, and we're on the other side this time. And that's going to make a bleep, so where does it go? Does it go to this one? No. You got it on this one, but nowhere else. Hey, right, I've been around them all already and so we know that we've got it there and the same we go to the pin next to it and it's gonna be near it somewhere Am I, I'm on the wrong side of the resistor I need to move to the other side of the resistor which is I think that one there so it narrows it down, like I say, you press about, I'm getting it here as well. So what am I on? Am I on the wrong one? Through there, hold on to that. Yeah, it's on the wrong one. See there? It's not doing it there. Going to be on the right thing. And then when I go over here. So we can... Go down the board like that, and when you get it closer, you can just change it out again. Same as before. And this is how I figured out that these were pins 14. I uh, know, not necessarily 14, but the 14th in and the 16th one in along here. And then we move to the next one. And that was a couple over. And if I'm on it there. So there's one of them. There's the other one. And that's that side. Both sides of that track that we see right there. So that's one way I found useful. If you've not got an, any idea where the wires go, it certainly makes it quicker using something like that. And it's cheap and it's quick and easy. This is just fun to see what's going on inside. I don't usually take them apart. I thought I'd try it. Now I'm going to try one more thing and see if I can get this 5 volt supply or the 5 volt reference if I set this back up again. Can I get the 5 volt reference to switch this on? Because uh, I was using through an LED from 12 volt but I'm going to try it on the 5 volt now. This one's just a 16 pounds off eBay. And it's purely for practicing taking these on and off, or if anything was going to go wrong, it wouldn't matter, because it's... I, I, I got it to play with, in a way, you know, I got to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's good, I thought I'd share that with you. I'm going to see if these work from 5 volt, though. Okay, this time I've got it set up the same as before, we've got the two test lights, so the coils... But instead of going from the battery with this to give it um, a 12 volt feed, I'm going from the 5 volt supply that's down here inside the circuit board. Remember we've got the 5 there and the 5 here. So now if we touch that same trigger that we had before, you see the test light comes on there. See that? I'll touch it again. That's the test light and I touch the trigger on the other side. And the other one comes on. So it looks like a 5 volt supply should be enough to get those to work. So I thought I would share that with you as well. It doesn't have to be a 12 volt. I didn't want to do it without a test light, but it looks like it's very low amperage. 5 volts through, through this is enough to switch it. So hopefully it's something in there has been interesting to somebody. It's not really a diagnostic. It was just me playing about with it. And just seeing how stuff's working and seeing how to find the tracks, where, where they go to using foil. And 
Thanks for watching.